Greetings and praise the Lord. Welcome to the New Bethel Church, the church that is controlled by the Spirit of God here in Kansas City, Kansas. And listen, I am glad to be able to come to you one more time with another fantastic life impact Bible study. I am so excited at what God is doing in our midst. We had a tremendous Sunday service. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. We were here on Sunday. The Lord came in and blessed us with a mighty word. Souls were delivered, consecrated new leaders. And we understand that this is the year, the 75th anniversary, the year of abundant blessings. So welcome again to our Life Impact Bible Study. Uh, and I'm sure that you will be blessed. Today we're going to continue with the discussion from my Ukraine mission trip that I took last month in January. So why don't you right now call someone, uh, get on social media, let them know that we're now live and you can join us with our Life Impact Bible study. We certainly have so much to pray for. Unfortunately, many uh, of our family members here in the church have have had uh, death enter into their realm through families. Uh, even my family, my sister-in-law passed. Uh, Lady Angela's brother, Jesse's wife, passed suddenly last week. So we want to, of course, uh, hold up that entire family. Just got news that Sister Deborah Payne's grandson was uh, killed and I'm just telling you, we've got so much and other saints that have lost loved ones, their services are coming up and we're just praying for them. And let us remember those that are ill, those that are sick, those that are still being challenged. We know that God is a healer and he's a deliverer. So before we get into the lesson today, why don't we now just go to God in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for your kindness, your mercy, and your grace. Thank you, God, for how good you've been in even allowing us the privilege of seeing another day and bringing us to the house of God. Lord, you know those that are hurting because of the loss of loved ones. I pray that they'll be comforted and strengthened. Those that are in need of a divine intervention that are looking for a miracle, looking for healing, we know, God, that you're able, and we're petitioning you now, in the name of Jesus, touch and have your way. Now, Lord, bless us today. Continue to shine upon us with your grace, your continual mercies, and we will ever give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, somebody, come on, let's just give God some praise. Well, uh, as I mentioned I want to again talk about the Ukraine mission that the Lord allowed me to participate in uh, in the month of January. We already had part one, and I want to share with you uh, part two. And just as a reminder, um, my colleague, Bishop Michael Franklin and myself made that trip because we felt led of the Lord to go at that time. Uh, we went during the time of their Christmas, uh, which is celebrated, I believe, the first Saturday in January. But I, uh, we, we did our mission to Ukraine, which is still under attack, that is still being uh, attacked by the Russians. Uh, they're still trying to uh, take land that actually belongs to Ukraine and they're in the fight of their life. Uh, much of their infrastructure has been destroyed, uh, their electricity and other things of that nature, but the entire rest of the country for the most part are supporting the Ukrainians. Now, we do have churches there. We have people that are still preaching the gospel, glory to God that are still crying out before the Lord and are there serving just like we. Today, on Wednesdays, we have our pantry ministry. Well, 
there in Ukraine about two or three times a week they are giving food and supplies to the people in that area. In addition, having services, preaching the gospel, baptizing individuals. So it is so encouraging to know that God has a representative all over the world. Hallelujah. And I'm grateful to be a representative here in Kansas City, Kansas. So as a reminder, this was uh, my travels to Ukraine. It was very, very uh, arduous, uh, very challenging in the travels. I first had to fly from Kansas City to Chicago. Uh, that was about an hour's flight. And then from Chicago, I then took a 10 and a half flight into Istanbul, Turkey. Can you imagine 10 and a half hours on a plane? Now, for instance, when we travel to Hawaii, the, we're normally there five or six hours. So you're almost doubling the time it would be traveling to Hawaii. But uh, we arrived, I arrived in Uc uh, uh, Istanbul, Turkey, and then took another flight to Bucharest, Romania. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Bucharest, Romania. Bucharest is the capital city of the country of Romania. And then thereafter, we took a five and a half drive into Ismail. Now, as I shared with you a couple weeks ago, this is the actual area that we traveled to, Ismail, Ukraine. Now, as you can see, Again, this is right on the border of Romania. We had to drive from Bucharest and actually go through another country called Moldova, the very southern tip of Moldova, and then we finally entered into Ukraine. Now, as I mentioned uh, as well a couple of weeks ago, Odessa is probably the closest area uh, to Ismail, where they actually had bombings uh, by the Russians. I wanted very much to get to Odessa, but uh, th th we just didn't have enough time in that trip. It's about a two, two and a half hour drive. So Bishop Franklin and I concentrated our time there at Ismail. Now, we pointed out last week that one of the reasons why Ismail uh, was safe is because, as you can see, it's right on the Romania border. Romania is part of NATO, what is the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, of which the United States is a part of, and so many other countries in Europe. Uh, so if one of the members of NATO is attacked, then you're attacking all of NATO. The Russians, of course, are having a hard time just with the Ukrainians, so they don't want to get NATO involved, which would involve all of the other major countries around. So that's why we were very safe getting into Ismail. However, we did have to go through a lot of security. I think I shared last week, it took us about uh, an hour or two hours just to go a mile because we had to go through first the checkpoint of Romania and Moldova. Then we had to go through the checkpoint of Moldova into the Ukraine. And they, of course, have security very high. Uh, they had to take our passports. They, want, they had to search our cars, our vehicles. And as I mentioned before, I was in the back seat minding my own business. So, picking up from last week, we talked about, uh, um, a couple weeks ago, we talked about all of the great things that we did, and I want to pick it up now on the Sunday, uh, the, the, I'm sorry, the, let me see, the Saturday, yeah, Saturday night. Remember, we had a full day. We started off at the refuge, where they had the refugees and we served them breakfast and ministered. 
We then went from there to the church, gave out toys to the young people there in the city. Uh, then we went on the uh, outreach mission where we gave away food and preached in the outdoor environment. Uh, and so this is the same day. After all of that, we went back to the church and we went to their youth session. So these are the young people there at the church, as well as they invited many other young people to, from the village to join them. I was so impressed. Pastor Alex, actually, he and some others uh, did the renovation of this youth center. As some of you remember, uh, they have sim something similar to what we do with our Haven Center. But they have a second floor over what would be our fellowship hall. They actually made this into a fantastic youth center. It was amazing. Here in Ukraine, they've got something for their young people. It was wonderful. They were sitting around. They were talking. They were worshiping. They played some games and activities. And one of the things that they do is when somebody comes that speaks English, they then try to improve their English even with their young people. So they have to speak English, they have to respond in English, they uh, ask questions in English. So it was very good for us to be there even on that behalf. So here they are here in this occasion, they're singing, another instance is they're talking. Now this is where they're actually practicing English. So they were talking about this is called horse in English. And they had various other slides showing different things that they then would repeat in English uh, because they already know it in the Ukrainian language. Now, I got a, a slide with these young men. First of all, this young man, and I, and I you know, it looked like everybody there was named Alex. I don't know why. Alex is a common name for them. But every time I turned around, they were introducing themselves as Alex. So he is their youth leader who is taking over from Pastor Alex. Pastor Alex was the youth leader. Remember, I explained the relationship with he and Pastor John. Pastor John is there locally. And then Pastor Alex goes out in outreach, but they have a great relationship working together as a team there in the church. So this young man who's doing a fantastic job, just got married a few years, uh, a few months ago, he's the youth leader. And this young man, I wanted to get a picture of him. I think I may have mentioned him uh, in our last session. He uh, is a part of the church. Think of one of our young, young men here at New Bethel. Uh, he was like 17. Uh, think of like little Roy, that age group. He was like maybe 17. And he wanted to join the army so bad. The saints there tried to discourage him from getting involved in the army. First of all, he's a small guy. He's smaller, smaller than me. All right. He was a small guy. He's a young guy. And they said, no, you'll never make it as a soldier. But he was determined to uh, get in the army. Finally, after persisting, the Ukrainians allowed him to become a part of the army. Shortly after he became a part of the army is when the Russians attacked Ukraine. Uh, the U Ukraine. So he was then shipped to the battle, the front lines of the battle in Ukraine, having just joined. And if you remember, after they uh, bombed, no men under, I think, 
60 could leave the country. That's why Pastor Alex's testimony is so powerful, Mother Kinslow, is that he was already out of the country, but then elected to come back into Ukraine to be with his church and his family. Isn't that wonderful? Many were trying to get out before that law was put into place. And you can remember the long lines trying to get through the border. Well, he was a young man. They're in war now. And he is put into the front line. Think of a 17-year-old, 18-year-old. And what happened, a bomb went off close to him and shrapnel went into his arm. And I found that out because when I shook his hand, I didn't try to be like some people and shake real hard, but I was just a little firm, and he began to tense. And that's how I found out he was wounded. After being wounded, they sent him home. So he, again, is one of the young men of the church who was in the war, but thank God he survived. If you remember a couple weeks ago, I at the refugee camp, I showed you the young lady whose son was uh, uh, taken as a prisoner, and she's not heard what his condition is. So this is real. We've not had that experience, but it's real, and they are going through that every day. That's why when we came, we were such a blessing to the saints there because it was like we said, we're not just sending our money, but we want to be there with you. Even if it's just for a short time, that you can know that there are those that are not just praying for you, but are concerned about you. So remember, we've had a full day. This is the end of that same day. And both uh, Pastor... Uh, Bishop Franklin and myself were asked to speak. This You can see them. They were there attentive, listening to us, and it was set up almost like a uh, talk show. It was almost set up like a talk show. And that was so powerful because instead of preaching to them, what we did was share our personal testimonies. They had a chance to ask questions, et cetera, et cetera. And again, the, the youth president, as you can see, he's the one moderating. Pastor Alex was the interpreter, okay? And the question was asked uh, by young people there in the crowd, how did you come to know Christ? That opened the door for us to share our testimony. Now, Sister Lisa, this is the beautiful thing that caught their attention. I started off and I shared how I grew up in the church. That from a toddler on up, that's all I knew was church. Sunday school, <laughs> you know, had to be there, Bible study. You weren't even in the choir, but you came because your parents were in the choir. Somebody know what I'm talking about. And I talked about never experiencing things like alcohol or drugs or even cursing. But here's the point. I said, even with that, I still needed to be saved. That just being in the church alone does not guarantee salvation. I had to know God for myself. And I then went on to share that uh, at 14, I was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, like many of them. I think I had somebody stand up who's 14 and receive the Holy Ghost and have been living now, saved ever since. Now, what started their uh, interest is when I first got up, and I'm talking, you know, 
you, you see me here. I said, uh, I've been married for 40 years, over 40 years. They, they, they didn't believe it because they didn't even think I was 40 years old. Of which I said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so that caught their attention. And as I explained, I have been saved now, walking with God for over 50 years. Hallelujah. Now, here's the contrast. Because after I gave my testimony, Bishop Franklin gave his testimony on how he came to know Christ. And he started off by saying, I was a gangster. And you know, we've had Bishop Franklin here. It's been some time ago. But his life was totally opposite of mine. He grew up as a gangster. He wasn't the one that uh, 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 did the uh, hurting of individuals. He was like the brains that figured out what to do. But he was working with one of the top gangsters in Texas, his area he came from. Look, and Michael shared it. He said, I was skimming off the top for myself. And the main gangster then put a contract hit on him. So he had to start running for his life. And for a long, to make a long story shorter, he ended up through that coming into the church, getting saved, and turning his life around. Now he's a bishop like myself in the organization. They heard that both of us from different backgrounds, one in the streets, one in the church, but we both still had to know Christ for ourselves. That's what I'm telling you. That you've got to know God for yourself. And you'll go through different experiences. Uh, Bishop Franklin looks back now and sees how that led him to finding his relationship with God. And sometimes you'll go in life through Go through some things in life that God has a plan to get you where you need to be. I wish somebody say amen. Uh, Deacon, uh, Deacon uh, Michael Moore had a birthday the other day. And I was looking at the comment by his brother Terrence that he put on social media. And Terrence said, uh, folk don't know all of what we've been through, but you know, Michael, and God has been good to us. So I'm just saying, the Lord has a way of getting our attention. Glory to God. If you won't listen to reason, God will cause circumstances in your life to get you to understand that you've got to yield to God when he's calling you. I wish somebody would say amen. So, we, that's how we ended, and the reason why I put this up, he was one of young men, uh, young people that came up and said, after hearing our testimony, we didn't even have to preach, we went from our testimony to an altar call. Who wants to be saved? He was just one of those that came up and said, I'm ready to turn my life around for Christ. Somebody to give God praise. Hallelujah. So that was Saturday night. That was a full day on Saturday. We then went to our hotel, got some rest, and now we're on Sunday. Their Sunday service. This is their church. Beautiful, beautiful. Look at their church. You see the church here? Uh, they, had the, they got the big screen like we do. They had the sound systems. Y'all don't hear me. This is in Ukraine. And uh, they had their worship team, top instruments. They were giving the best, their excellence, to God. So uh, Bishop Franklin uh, preached that Sunday morning. And here is Pastor Alex, who's interpreting. Now, that's what I love about interpreters who have the Holy Spirit. 
they're feeling the same thing when they're interpreting. So you see, Michael's got his hand up. He put his hand up. Uh, but the people were just blessed. This is not, this is not uh, uh, Pastor McKinney. That's not Pastor McKinney. They're kneeling. That's Pastor John. Remember I showed you Pastor John? The worship was so good. And just like us, they express themselves in worship. So while worship is going on, he's there just kneeling before the Lord. And uh, these are the saints that are standing. And I'm here in the first row as well. But I took that picture so you can see that their worship is just like our worship. Glory to God. They're just singing in a different language, but oftentimes with the same melody. And then this is the uh, preaching after the preaching. And Bishop Franklin preached a fantastic message. He stirred the people. And then again, the altar call was given. And as you can see, they even had a balcony. And when the altar call was given, the people came up and lined the altar. Uh, this was not just all members, but they had done evangelism. They had done street ministry. They had gotten the people in. And this is on a Sunday morning. And many just came to the altar. We anointed. Hallelujah. We anointed each one of them in the name of Jesus and began to lay hands on them. Just like here, they were falling out under the Spirit of God. They had their team ready when somebody was ready to fall out. Glory to God. I'm telling you, it was just like being in a Pentecostal service here. Uh, we saw the same exact thing. Uh, and this is here again. That, that you can see they're even praying for them. That's one of the deacons. That's one of the deacons. Remember, this is the youth president. But uh, as we were praying here in the front, the deacon was behind them getting ready to, if they fall out, glory to God. Some of our deacons, they still be sitting. But this deacon here was up here ready, getting ready. Glory to God. This is me laying hands on somebody. We laid hands on them. It was a powerful service. Somebody just give God praise in here. Hallelujah. And you can even praise him at home. Ah, I'm encouraged because God is telling us this is the year of abundant blessings. And abundant blessings does not just mean natural blessings, but it's the ability to be used by God to do great exploits for Him. Well, after the Sunday service, right in the foyer of the church, this is another time that they actually pass food out. So as villagers are going back to their home, they already have it prepared, already have it organized. And as people are leaving the church, uh, they get so much, you know, uh, it's, it's all organized. They get one of this, two of this, etc. So they have their bags, and these are the people that are in need. And you can even see on this side, coming through the church hallway, getting their things. They've got everything organized. That's why I was so impressed. I love the organization, the administration. They had it together. And here we are, Bishop Franklin and, my, and myself, assisting with the giving out of the food. Now, why did I show this? They even had tickets where a person couldn't try to get twice. Uh, you got a ticket when you left, then you gave your ticket, just like you do when you're doing pantry ministry and other things. I'm telling you, I was just so impressed. Then they'd count the tickets afterwards to make sure everything was in order. But that was such a blessing. And we were uh, uh, concluding the morning service with everybody going out. And again, you can see this is the young lady here uh, who collected the tickets. You see the tickets she got in her hand? So as people got in line, they then gave her the ticket so that they then could go through and get their food item. So if you didn't have a ticket, don't try to get up there and get that food. Glory to God. I'm just telling you, it, 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 even though it's thousands and thousands of miles away, everybody still operates with the spirit of excellence when you are representing Christ. Somebody say amen. So after that, 
Uh, we then went and got, I think, a little bite to eat. Then we came back to the church. Remember the last time we gave toys to those in the village. These represent what was given to the children of the church. So these are the young people from the church that we were able to give gifts to. The contributions that we have been sending to Ukraine help purchase some of the toys for them to be given away, the food that we were giving away. So uh, I can attest that everything that Pastor Alex uh, has received and the ministry is being used effectively. And of course, they continually need so much. But this is an instance where his Bishop Franklin, he's passing out uh, different items. These are toys. They didn't know what was in their box. Uh, but again, each box was wrapped. They had something specific for age, sex, uh, whether it was a boy, a girl, whether they were an older boy, younger girl. So they had the gifts. The kids didn't know. So they got them, and then they, the, the leader would say, all right, open your presents. They would open their presents. Oh, you can see the smiles on their faces. And remember, something that small can bring joy to a child. We're often so spoiled because we want to get everything for our kids, the most expensive uh, uh, items, but they were happy just to get maybe a coloring book or a doll or something that they can consider as a toy. So again, it just helped me even more to appreciate how blessed we are even here in America and more specifically at New Bethel. So we spent a lot of time with them. Uh, these are all of the kids. Uh, you might see us, we're the darker ones there in that picture. Bishop Franklin is there, and here I am over here. And again, all the kids, they and they're Santa Claus. Santa Claus was one of their elders in the church. One of the elders became Santa Claus, so it was a wonderful time. Don't forget, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. And again, thank you for watching this through the video virtual means but we're doing this from the live noonday class as well. So this is all on Sunday. We started off with the church, having the altar appeal, doing the giveaway. Then we did this with the children. Uh, and again, here's an example of the Santa Claus, who is one of the elders of the church. He had a Santa Claus costume. And again, they were uh, receiving their gifts. Uh, it was so exciting. I wanted to show you this because in between time, we did go get maybe some soup or something to uh, eat, one of the restaurants in Ukraine. Remember, this is their, son, uh, their Christmas. And while we were eating, listen, carolers came in and started singing Christmas songs to the people in the restaurant. I got a little video clip so you can hear what it's like for them singing. It's just a group from another church. They went caroling. So they just came in the restaurant and started singing. So uh, we can go ahead and play that now. <laughs> I'm tambourine too. Well, they ended it right there. All right. So again, uh, that was them singing carolers, uh, those coming in singing uh, Christmas carols. And I thought that was such a blessing. You didn't even find that in America, where people come in the restaurants and start singing. 
uh, but that spirit is there just so you can understand. And again, this was a group from another church that decided we were just going to do some Christmas caroling. Well, after all of this was done, to me, one of the highlights of the entire trip happened next. You see, I'm always, I'm always concerned about the team that is working. Nothing is done by one person. And I'll share something I did personally for the team. But something else we did to show love and fellowship. Somebody say love and fellowship. Come on, say it a little louder. Love and fellowship. That's one of the principles of our church, of the apostolic church breaking of bread, fellowship, and encouraging one another. Look to your neighbor and just tell them, be encouraged. <laughs> Find somebody else, just tell them, be encouraged. You never know what a person is going through, but your brother and sister in Christ has your back. So, Elder Rainey, this is something that we did. Bishop Franklin said, I want to have a special dinner banquet for the widows and the widowers of the church. So we went, he, he put up the money that was given, and they found a restaurant, and I'm telling you, it was like us, going to a banquet. Hear me. I think I may have mentioned it last week. Some of these have never been to a restaurant in about 20 years. And especially with the war going on, they're fearful to go out. But we had a fantastic, look at that. We had a fantastic banquet. I'm telling you, I was so blessed. They had candelabras. The dinner, the, the, the table was spread. Napkins in place. Y'all don't hear me. And again, this was the first time many of them uh, who were widows, widowers, others in the church had a chance to fellowship. Look at that. Uh, and as you can see, that that Coke bottle there, hallelujah. But it was a blessing. The food was wonderful. The venue, and for the first time, many of them had a chance to dress up. Like, like we dress up when we go to the, for them, many of them, it was like getting their old gowns that they used to wear. And we came and we had such a wonderful, they were playing, uh, 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 Deacon Martez, they were actually, playing games, uh, going through different skits, having wonderful time with fellowship, and they just couldn't believe it, Sister Virginia, that this was all given to them free. They did not have to pay a dime. Somebody shout, glory to God. So again, here is uh, Bishop, uh, uh, Bishop Franklin and Pastor Alex, and that's pa Pastor John and myself, and we just interacted with the people. And again, many of them, this is their first time out. Uh, in fact, I, don't, I, I got close-ups, uh, but I don't think I included it. But this is the one couple. They were like the oldest couple there who had been married for over 40 years. He was like in his 80s. Many of them were in their 80s. Uh, he, I think he was the oldest one. So what they did, Remember, this was the couple that said they hadn't been to a restaurant like this in 20 years. So what they did was have like a, a gift certificate that they gave to the oldest couple. So they ended up getting a gift certificate that they can come back there at any time and enjoy dinner uh, on their own. Wasn't that, isn't that wonderful? And I, I had to share this. Because I want, and I got a couple of clips, and we're almost finished, but 
uh, this lady plays the accordion. And she just got up, started playing the accordion, and they were singing. And uh, there's that couple I was telling you about, the oldest couple. And they have a tradition they, that somebody mentioned to me. There's a tradition in Ukraine that before you have dessert, you got to go up and dance. So I pointed out to them. I said, listen, I hear there's a tradition uh, before we have dessert. We got to dance. Oh, you should have saw them. That was a group immediately got up uh, doing a dance. And I'm, I got a couple more clips. And I want to share, uh, show you this. First, the lady with the accordion, she went around as people were eating, uh, playing the accordion. So let's go ahead and, and put that clip on if we can. And you can hear how we were blessed even through her ministry. And again, this is the dinner for the widows and the widowers. That's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. But keep it there. Just go ahead and keep it there. This is when we all got up to dance. He's about 80-some years old. Look at him. And of course, I had to get up there with him. These two, they were like the stars. They got in the center. Look at him. I got so tickled. These are the saints. That's the... She was almost in the spirit of her dancing. I couldn't get over him. He looked like a brother dancing. You know, I had to be in there. I had to get in there. That's Pastor John. So again, we it, it, it was a great blessing because if you can imagine, they've been under so much stress, so much heartache, just to have a relief where you can come together and show fellowship and love. That meant so much. Now, let's go to the next video if you can. Uh, this is the young lady who was playing the accordion. While we were eating, you see, they're singing. They gave pass out songs for them to sing with them. So we had our own little banquet hall. Here's the couple that I was talking about. All of these widow, widowers. So you can see that was that ended our day, and then we had to leave and head back to America. But I'm, I'm telling you, it was a wonderful experience, something I'll never soon forget. But it was through your contributions, your donations, uh, the effort of going. 
And I did something special. Remember, I always talk about I look at the team and see how they're working hard. So, Sister Grace and I, I got Pastor Alex aside. I said, Pastor, is there a like a spa area or a gym area that the you know, the team can go and just relax for a day? And he said, yes, there is a place. They have a pool. They sell pizza, things of that nature. So I said about how much would it, they have like 25. I said, how much would a day pass in essence cost? It's about $10 per person, 10 American dollars. I then, with my wife, contributed like $250 so all of the team can go and have a day at the spa. They were so blessed by that. They sent me pictures and even a video where they said thank you. Uh, they were at the indoor pool area. They were sitting around. And because they had their bathing suits on, I didn't want to show it to you all because y'all be saying, what's going on over there? But it they just appreciated that. And sometimes you just have to learn to say thank you to those that are working so hard, especially in ministry. So if you've been blessed by this, uh, this presentation of the Ukraine mission support, come on and just give God some praise. Yes, ma'am, Mother. Uh, Mother Fleming wanted to know what were we eating. It was a, uh, it was it was natural foods. I mean, uh, basic foods, nothing too different from what we would eat. Uh, but they had like finger foods. They had different meats and pastas. Uh, it was very nice. I was able to eat it with no problem. But I I can normally eat anything. But it, it was really almost like going to an American restaurant. They had pizzas and things of that nature. So again, it wasn't that foreign. It's not like you were going to the bush country in Africa or somewhere in India. But it was pretty good. Yes, Deegan? That's, uh, uh, Deacon Moore is asking, what is the congregation? I really didn't ask, but you can see by the size of the church. That is probably the largest PAW church there in Ukraine. And we do have other churches as well. But that is like the main church there in Ukraine. Hundreds were there for the service, but many were villagers. Uh, you can tell the core people who were the workers, the families that are like involved. So it, it duplicated and replicated really almost what we see here. So I don't have the exact number, but it was a good sizable congregation. Absolutely, with all the children. Uh, yes, ma'am. Sister Alexander, that is a great question. This was in January. Listen, I'm just getting ready to show you the miracle of God. It was in January, and during this time, normally, Snow, sub-freezing weather. In fact, the last time Bishop Franklin was there, uh, they ran off the road because it was so icy and it was, they were going from different villages. The miracle of God. The Russians had targeted, as you know, their power plants because the Russians, through Putin, were thinking we're going to freeze them out. And because Europe would need fuel, they'll still have to buy our fuel, which will help us with our war efforts. Look what God did. This season was one of the warmest seasons that they ever had. The temperature was like in the 40s, the 50s. Uh, and when I was in Bucharest, I was walking around just with a sweater on. Uh, it did get a little like below freezing at night, but it was not unbearable. And here's the, here's the thing about it. Russia has had one of its coldest winters. So they believe that's a miracle of God with the Lord still showing that he is with them 
because they've had one of their mildest winters, whereas Russia has had one of its harshest winters. So the temperature was about 40 degrees. Sometimes it got up to 50 while I was there. If you were outside, like you saw the last time I was out there preaching, I still had my hat and gloves on. But for the most part, it was really mild. No need of the, the, the heat things that we need here. And I was prepared just in case. Uh, Sister Mother Grayson. Okay. Hallelujah. Right. Mother Grayson is saying this is such a blessing to see this because all you see in the media is the destruction, the bombings, and the homes, and the killings. So it's so refreshing to know whoo, that God is still moving with his people and keeping them safe during this time. Somebody to give God some praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. she, was, she was just mentioning that the dance looked like a holy dance that they did back in Jesus' time. And again, you have to remember that they are worshiping. Hallelujah. Uh, we think dancing is always evil because it's tied to secular music. But when you look through the scripture, David danced. He danced so that he danced out of his clothes. We often misconstrue what the world has taken that really belongs to the church. We call shouting, which is our holy dance, but they were coordinated, they had their eyes open, they still were worshiping, they still were praising God. And that's about living your best abundant life. Uh, we got to get out of thinking things that we were indoctrinated with, uh, that, that if you dance, that you're in sin. I wish somebody hear me. But, but, but this was a beautiful spirit, beautiful attitude. It showed love. It showed uh, 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 assisting one another. And I'm telling you, it'll be an experience that I won't soon forget. Any other questions? Again, thank you as well for joining us in this Life Impact Bible Study. I pray that you have been blessed. I want to remind you that I will be starting a new series next Wednesday. I'll probably introduce it on Sunday if I feel led. How to prepare for what? Abundance. This is the year of abundant blessings. Well, you got to prepare for abundance. So I, 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 I'm going to be teaching a series of lessons that hopefully will help all of us in preparing for abundance. And I'm calling March 1st uh, an Ecclesia meeting. I'm letting everybody know now so that you can put it on your calendars. Uh, that's going to be Wednesday, March 1st. It's going to be an Ecclesia meeting or a saints meeting. And on March 1st, there will be no noonday class. There'll be no virtual teaching, but I will be here. We're going to be introducing some new ministers who will be ministering their first message here at New Bethel Church. There's a number of them. Uh, we also are going to be launching our Diamond Campaign Fund. We talked about that on Saturday at our church business dinner, our uh, business session. And then we also plan on revealing the 2023 celebration plans for this being our 75th church anniversary. So don't forget, join us this coming Sunday, 10 o'clock, and then next Wednesday, uh, it'll be virtual. There will not be an in-person Bible study next Wednesday. Everything will be virtual and it'll be at 7 o'clock on Wednesday, but it'll be a series of teaching on how to prepare for abundance. 
So before I conclude, again, I want to thank everyone for your giving. We did mail uh, the annual statements for those that did not pick them up. They've been mailed to your home to let you know how much you gave in 2022 uh, for your tax purposes. Uh, but again, thank you for your giving. That is how we're able to do a lot of the ministry work that we're doing today. And I encourage you, please, you can give by Giveify. You can also give by Cash App, give in person, or actually go online and give through PayPal. Uh, be blessed. Let the Lord continue to shine upon you. And I pray that you'll be used of God. You might not be able to go to Ukraine, but you can tell somebody down the street. You can tell somebody on your job. You can witness to somebody and encourage somebody that the Lord is the best thing that will happen to them. I love you all. Have a wonderful week. In Jesus' name, amen.